Hey, welcome everyone to the Alternates, a basketball show for the others where we like to showcase independent music and discuss all things basketball. We've got a really fun show lined up for you today. Coming out of the All-Star Weekend, no games to talk about. Yep. So what do we do? Play our own games. We play games. Yeah. So we got some games lined up today. We're going to be playing Start Today, where Mm -hmm. we will be crowning an NBA champion with no games played. Yep. (laughs) And then after that, we're going to be getting into three pack, my favorite segment that we have. And then, of course, picking our duo jams for the week. All that is coming up after this showcased song that we have. What are we showcasing? Okay, this is a song called Mi Corazón Yoro from Ausencia here from Los Angeles. This okay. is off the Quantas Vida 7 inch on Verdugo Discos Records here locally. It's a fun little power pop kind of tune. All right, let's get into it. Let's get into it. up y'all yes thank you for joining us today it is tuesday february 22nd 2022 two 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 tuesday yeah that's a fun one for me it's Derek fisher day (laughs) two 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 Two, two, we will two. never celebrate Derek Fisher <laughs> no. on this show. No. We, of course, are the alternates. I am your host, Brian Cullen, and with me is everyone's favorite in arena announcer, oh, Clayton Stevens. I had a blast doing it. So happy to have you all here. Before we jump into our first game of the day, just want to ask you all if you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe to the YouTube channel. We are trying to get to 200. It really, 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 really really goes a long way in helping us out if we get 200 i don't know we'll do something fun on the show i'll come up with something embarrassing for myself or let us know something you want us to do yeah how about that that's even better you choose what we do for the 200 subscriber if you're not watching us on youtube hit subscribe on whatever podcast platform you are getting the show on if there's an option for rating review leave one of those i keep threatening it i'll read one on on the air (laughs) yeah he's not afraid i'll do it I we live my life you. without fear. We keep telling you. <laughs> They're testing me. <laughs> and then if you want to get a hold of us, you can do so by emailing us thealternatehoop at gmail.com. You can follow us on TikTok at the alternates NBA for some fun TikTok content. Yep. Or you can leave a comment in the video right below and we will get back to you right away. With that said, Clayton, how are you? What's going on? It was a, I mean, yeah, we had the all-star game, but... No real games. You no know, real games. It's a weird time, you know, getting a lot of Instagrams of people in Cancun and beautiful places <laughs> and spending their time relaxing as they should, getting their bodies right. You know, nice little break for us here. Uh, but I think you know that my first love in sports is, is me. Well, it's you, of course. You're my top love, but my first love, <laughs> my first love was baseball. Okay. 
Okay, and the MLB. Uh, what 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 can be said? It's been a tough. Since the season ended, there's been a lockout. Mm. There has been a lot of, you know, both sides posturing and not a lot getting done. And not a lot of news coming out about what they can agree on. Yeah. It's it's just like every time it's, well, they don't agree on anything and they're going to try again in a week. <laughs> so it's very disheartening for the fans of the sport. Okay. But there was a tweet a few days ago that came out. Now, this is a rumor, and I will say since then, the Players Association director or something retweeted it and was like, this isn't true. But it does spark a fun conversation, I think. Okay. So what this guy, his name's Craig Carton. He is a uh, radio host in New York City. Mm -hmm. Uh, And he says that the MLB playoff format is set and that the fans are going to love it and Mm. that it's changed. And so he says there's going to be seven playoff teams per league team with the best record gets a bye and goes to the division series top remaining division winners pick their opponent from the four wildcard teams it goes on etc okay look we don't know if this is going to happen in baseball it sounds like it's probably not going to happen in baseball but what i want to know is what about if what if we did this in the nba okay so we have team with the best record in each league Mm -hmm. gets a bye then the top remaining teams choose their opponent I think in this format, we would keep the play-in tournament, like the 9-10 game, to decide yeah. who that last team is. Are we keeping 7-8 in the play-in as well? We are keeping 7-8 in the okay. play-in as well. Um, Well, no. I, I think actually it would just be 9-10. That, so so that would, it would go from like play-in to wild card. Right, exactly. Okay. And then, so not only do you choose it, the first round is three game series all at home. So you choose your opponent, and in the first round you play them three times at best of three at home. Interesting. Then it would move on, let's say, as traditionally has been done recently. Uh, I mean, I like some of it. I I definitely think the NBA needs to change up the playoff formatting a little bit. For me, it's getting rid of conferences. I think the top 16 teams get in. I'm sick of conferences. Travel, it, it's not like... We're living at the turn of the century where they're taking covered wagons across the country. Travel's not that big of a deal. I'm Mm. I'm tired of the conferences. That's what I would change. I like the idea of a bye week for the top two teams. But in my setting, it doesn't have to do with conferences. It's just the two best teams in the league get a bye. Okay. I like that. I also like picking your opponent in that first round i think that's super fun i think it's really fun it's very intriguing yes that is very fun i am opposed to a three game series though i think the first round still needs to be seven games just because that opens up more opportunity for excitement of an upset it's ooh, i totally disagree here now you when you when you go to a seven game format i think you're getting rid of randomness and getting rid of something that can happen quickly right like you can get hot for two games, and in over a seven-game series, it's not going to end up mattering. In a three-game series, you have two hot games from three, you're moving on to the next round. Yeah, I guess it depends on whether you are looking at, in a three-game series, it comes down to players being hot. In a seven-game series, it's a coach's match. Right, so that's what I mean, is that, you know, I think this would add a level of excitement to these games. Plus, I think you have the play-in tournament, the level of excitement for this, I think this is a way to still be able to generate as much money as you were generating from the seven game series, but in a different format where it's a closer to a one game elimination March Madness style thing at the top. Then once you get to the next round, okay, we're only down to a few teams. Now it gets serious. Seven games. The storylines have written themselves. I could see it. I could see it. I just I want to give I hear what you're saying. I just want to give an underdog more bites at the apple. Mm. in a seven game series okay but we like so we like the the buy for the the top teams love i think that's amazing right and we like picking your opponent that is the best idea in this whole thing like the buy honestly i can give or take part of me is like oh, you're the top team you shouldn't take a day off but the i love the idea of picking an opponent i think it adds an extra element of drama especially if you pick an opponent and then lose the series 
Oh, oh I know. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> just, <laughs> and it would happen at some point in time, right? Maybe not it, right away. It, it might just, take 20 it, it, it years. It just has to. Yeah. You know, just, Probability like, you know. says it would happen at some point. Yeah. And that is, uh, I hope I'm online the day that that happens because that is incredible. Yeah. So let's let's go to our first game here today, which involves the playoffs, of course, which yes. is start today. Start today. So in this segment, we have the bracket here where all the teams are currently. Mm -hmm. So this is where every single team is seated during the All-Star break. Obviously, yep. any no games have been played, so there's been no movement since the last game that was played. On Thursday, was that the last game? Feels like so long ago. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so we are eliminating the play-in tournament here, despite everything we just said. We're going traditional here for the sake of clarity. I'm going to take the West. Mm -hmm. You're going to take the East. We're going rapid fire, round by round, until we pick a champion. Yep. So we're going to start East, because that's where the first games are played. Okay. The 1-8 matchup. Yep. Heat versus Nets. This is a juicy one. This is a very juicy one. You know, the Nets, as we've talked about, you know, recently leading up to the break here, have just been playing, like, absolute dog shit. Don't you, don't you dare do that to my man, Cam Thomas. <laughs> uh, don't lump him in with yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> I love Cam Thomas, but you know what? The Heat, they're pretty healthy right now. They have all their big pieces. I, I got the Heat winning pretty easily in this series, actually. Okay, all right. Heat over Nets. I don't disagree with that. I think it's a close series, though, because they, they don't, the Nets don't have home court, which means Kyrie is more available to play. Yeah, that is true. Okay, then we got the two matchup, 2-7. Bulls versus Raptors. Okay, so this one I might get a little flack for here. You're not going to do it. I'm doing it. I'm picking the Raptors. <laughs> okay. Okay, hold on, dude. The Bulls are tied for a second. Mm -hmm. Levine is playing. Yes. How does that happen? How do you possibly have Toronto winning this series? Look, there's a couple things why I think Toronto could win this over a seven-game series. Now, if it's a three-game series, <laughs> might be a little different. Oh, I but see what over, this is. This is a lobby. That's all that's happening. Over a seven-game series, I think Nick Nurse is, you know, inarguably one of the top three coaches in the league. They have the most switchable, interesting defense in the league, I think. And just enough upside, I think, over seven games with Levine. Let's say he's playing, but we don't know. He's We don't know. We haven't seen it yet. We don't know. So... I'm picking the Raptors because I believe in Nick Nurse, and I just love the way this team is playing, man. Like, I, I really think over a seven-game series, they could pull this out. If the Bulls were healthy, no question they're winning this series. But no Caruso, no Lonzo, a little too much. They keep winning. They're tied for first. They're I only know. in second on technicality. Yeah. yeah, again, it's a playoff thing to me. It's, a, it's an adjustments playoff thing. Wow. I think the Raptors could do it. I think okay. they can do it. Absolutely fucking insane, but we're going to move on to the 3-6 matchup. The Sixers, your Sixers mm -hmm. versus my Celtics. That's right. I got the Sixers winning, and that may <laughs> uh, that may hurt you. This is the most furious I've been on any episode. Uh, who's guarding Joel Embiid? I guess, He's going to score a thousand points. Yeah, over but in a series, series like that, okay, Harden's not healthy yet. They got rid of their best shooters. I just, okay, you let Joel cook. Like, you, we've seen in the playoffs so many times. The Clippers have done it with Dallas. Let Luka do his thing, hold everyone else down. And I think that the Celtics are capable of doing that. Yeah, I, I do think that. The problem with the Celtics, to me, is they are the, uh, I think by the numbers, the switchiest team in the entire NBA. They switch everything. I'm, good luck against a team that has Joel Embiid when you're trying to switch everything. I mean, it, it, it just, I just think... This is a bad matchup for the Celtics. I think almost any other team, I probably would be picking the Celtics, but specifically against the Sixers, I just have a hard time seeing them keep up. Okay, all right. 4-5. Cavs, Bucks. Uh, I got the Bucks. Yeah? Yeah. I Easily? Pretty, yeah, I mean, handily. Like, okay. uh, you know, I, I like the Cavs. They've been a great story. Um, the Bucks are just, they're so good. The three-point shooting, it's what we've been talking about for a while. I, I, I really trust them. I trust them to get this done. Okay, fair enough. Let's go out west. All right, let's go west. The 1-8 matchup, we have a rematch 
of the Western Conference Finals, Suns Clippers. Okay, this one hurts me. I'm picking the Suns. Yeah. Only because the Clippers are injured. If you have a healthy Clippers team, I might pick them to win the whole thing. I mean, look, if they have just Paul George. Yeah. I think they could really upset the Suns. We saw them play them really tough with no Paul George recently. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I mean, the the Clippers run, they went into this break. They're one game below 500. Incredible considering all of the talent that they're missing on the roster. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, they lost that Phoenix game, but they beat the Warriors. They beat the Mavs before that. They're playing really good basketball yeah. right now. And that now. Phoenix game, right, was back to back against that uh, uh, after the Warriors yeah. game, you know, coming off a huge win. Everyone looked completely gassed. They played the most games in the NBA of any team. Yeah. Uh, so, and they barely lost that game. So, yeah, I. I'm with you. I think they would make this interesting, though. I, I really do. But let's move down to seven. Warriors, Wolves. Okay, I got a juicy pick here. I'm picking. Are the you wolves. doing it? I love it. I'm Come on, tell wolves. me why. Tell me why you're doing it. But I love it. Okay, Warriors don't have Draymond. Yeah, second best player, which has been like a, a debate online lately, whether or not he's the second best or Clay is the second best. Oh, Draymond's easily their. Oh, he's their second most important yes, player. How yes. about that? I think that is the the correct phrasing on that. But they're good, but they haven't been great. They've been they've been good. I'll give them that. Yeah. But I mean, they're six games behind Phoenix. They've kind of slipped back a little bit. I think that they're vulnerable, especially without Draymond and. Patrick Beverly currently healthy, and as I outlined a few episodes ago, with Patrick Beverly in the starting five for the Wolves, they have a top 10 defense. They have the best offense currently in the NBA. They have the hottest offense currently in the NBA. Yeah. I got to go with the Wolves. I just think that they they wear them out a little bit. I get it, and like you're saying, I think the problem actually comes offensively for the Warriors here yeah. is that they would just have trouble scoring with the Wolves without Draymond because obviously Draymond, everyone talks about his defense. He's one of the best defensive players to ever play this game, but he's also such an amazing facilitator. Yeah. Really juices up their offense and gets all these guys going, gets some really clean open looks. And we've seen without him struggling to get clean looks, struggling to score at times, um, having to play way too much Gary Payton, who's a great defensive player, but he should be used you know sporadically you shouldn't be relying on him to be scoring or you know scoring in a game stuff like that so well the pick was so hot we've got like seven car alarms going off outside (laughs) yeah okay next matchup we've got the grit or excuse me we have the jazz and mavericks i'm i'm picking the mavs to win this series the jazz again they've been good to they've been okay to good lately Mm mm-hmm the Mavs can play small, and if we know there is one kryptonite for Utah, it is teams that can play small. Yeah. I believe the Mavs will get their first round win finally against the Utah Jazz and will finally put the the dynamite stick into Utah to blow the roster up in the offseason. You know, if you're a Utah fan, you almost want this series. Like, you almost just want it's to run its just, course, just yeah. end it. Accelerate just it, yeah. Put the, just, just end this team. <laughs> like, it just, it's not going to happen. This is the worst matchup on the board for them. I'm yeah. totally with you. And then lastly, we have the Grizzlies versus the Nuggets. Pretty fun matchup. Grizz. I'm, the Grizz have just been so good. I've got to pick Memphis here. I yep. love Jokic. I just don't think Denver has enough right now to be able to win the series. I agree. Healthy, I think it's a very interesting series. Yeah, yeah, totally. But Memphis wins right now. Okay, back out east. Heat versus Bucks. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, these teams love playing each other in the playoffs. <laughs> um, I think the Bucks. again, I trust them to do what they did again last season wow. and get through the Heat again. Okay. Um, I think they've figured out how to play against a team like that. Just love love the Bucks. Okay. I think it could go either way. I think it's a pretty tight series, but I'm I'm not gonna push back on that. Yeah. The Bucks is, is good with me. Okay, Raptors, Sixers. Stick to your guns. Do it, dude. Stick to your guns. Sixers. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, I wanna you know, I'd love to pick the Raptors here, but again, it's a it's a matchup thing. The Sixers, if they get these matchups, like it lines up this way where yeah. they keep playing these teams that can't guard their best player. 
it's going to go really well for them. They fell in a great spot here, so I got the Sixers and the Bucks meeting in the conference finals. Okay, I love it. All right, so then we have got the, let's see, we are at Wolves and Grizzlies. I'm picking the Grizzlies. I, I think this is where the, the buck stops for the Wolves. The Grizzlies are just too good. They're too good. I got to take them. That offense is, this might be the worst matchup for them in a second round. Because yeah. I talked about the Wolves improving their offense, or sorry, improving their defense. The Grizzlies defense is unreal, and Super I think it can stifle them. Yep. All right. And then we have the Suns and Mavericks. Yeah, I'm taking the Suns here. The Steve Nash Bowl. Yeah, I I would honestly, you might call me crazy, I would probably still pick the Suns here if this Chris Paul hand, hand injury becomes a big deal. I just think that there's there's so much shooting on the Suns. I don't know. I, I think that that's... Yeah, the one-man show of Luka yeah. comes to an end. And they here. have enough yeah. guys that can limit the other players that the Mavs have. I'm picking Suns. Yeah, the Mavericks don't really have any other choice, right? Like they have to go with their guy and yeah. that's that's who they have. If he's not if they if anyone can find a way to shut him down even a little bit, they might be an easier out. Yeah. Right. And some. I think Jay Crowder plays a lot of minutes on on Luca. All right. Suns Grizzlies conference finals. All right. East finals. Bucks Sixers. Woo! Finally, the Sixers have met their match here. The <laughs> yeah. Bucks are going to the finals. This is a team who can guard the Sixers. All right. Well, if we know anything about the show, it's that we are very high on the Bucks every time we play this. God, it, it's it's like we've said so many times. It's like the combination of Giannis giving you fifty every playoff game yeah. and just and a little bit of three point shooting, let alone having like Drew Holiday as your lead guard. They're they're so tough to pick against any time. All right, so Western Conference Finals, we've got the Suns and Grizzlies. I'm picking Memphis. Wow. I've got Memphis winning this You've got this Memphis series. winning. Yes. Okay, tell me why. I love it, but I want to hear why. They're physical. They're fast. I think that they can outmatch them in most places on the floor. I love this matchup for the Grizzlies. They are not afraid of anyone they're not afraid yeah. of anyone. That's that's for damn sure. And if there's one team that's going to try to shake anybody, it's going to be Phoenix. And I think Memphis not backing down, playing their style of basketball, wears Phoenix down, and the Grizzlies win this series. Okay, so we have a new championship series. Yep. The Bucks, who are always there, versus the upcoming, the upstart Memphis Grizzlies. Yep. Brian, it's your cho- your uh, choice here. Who's going to win the NBA Finals? This is a tough one. But I'm picking Memphis. <laughs> so we talked about <sighs> being able to guard a team's best player. Mm-hmm. In this matchup, I think Jaron Jackson Jr. has the toolkit to minimize Giannis as much as anybody can. You're not going to completely take him out of a game. That's a great call. But I think that he can make things difficult enough for him to open up enough cracks for the Grizzlies to get through. And I think Memphis wins this series. Yeah. And you know what? <laughs> look, look, I, 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 I'm I, kind of with you. Like, you've immediately sold me on the Jaron Jackson thing. You know, then I go to, okay, John ja Morant versus Drew Holiday. And yeah, Drew Holiday is an incredible defender. One of the best in the game. Yeah. But there's nobody in this league who can stay in front of John Morant. And he's nobody. Not, and look, Drew Holiday is great on the perimeter. He's not jumping with Jaw. He cannot jump with him. No. And anybody who attempts to is going to send them to the line. And what I love about the Jaron thing, too, is on the other side of the ball, he pulls Giannis away from the, yep. the rim, opening up the rim for Jaw and for what they love to do, which is get to the rim. Yeah. Uh, it's a bold pick. Obviously, they're basically their first playoff run. You have them winning the finals. Absolutely. But I get it. I'm in. I'm it, in. I it's love been it. that kind of season. Why not? I love it. I love it. Okay. Well, we're going to do this again in two weeks and see how the standings have moved and crown a new champion. But now it's time for us to take a trip to the altar. Mm. It's time to ask the basketball gods. so as we walk through the valley in the shadow of death here at the altar of the basketball gods 
a basketball God fearing show. We are absolutely. We each get to ask something. Do you mind if I kick us off? I'd love, I'd love for you to kick us off. Okay. So we're coming out of the all-star weekend. My last ask had to do with the all-star weekend. I'm going to stick with that theme a little bit. Okay. Because I didn't get what I wanted this year. So if the gods are going to come through for me next year, I want to throw a little cherry on top. Okay. So I asked to change the dunk contest a little bit, put in rim protectors, make it very fun. I want to make a change to the judging of the contest. Oh, okay. Yeah, we didn't discuss that. I want to get rid of the panel. No panel of judges. You get one singular judge. Okay. You have have an idea for who that might be? They are your judge, jury, and executioner. And there is one name I can think of that fits that beautifully. Skip Bayless. (laughs) Let Skip Bayless be the sole judge of the dunk contest. Oh, my God. He is mic'd up through the arena speakers the whole time. He gets to talk as much as he wants during dunks. It would be a combination of the all-star dunk contest and a roast. Oh, Drip Bayless himself. <laughs> yeah. I did, did. Oh, oh, and when he eliminates somebody, I just thought of this. He gets to throw their jersey in the trash like he did in that clip with him throwing away all of his uh, Cowboys gear. Amazing idea. And he stomps on it with his Jordans and says, <laughs> never lose. Yes. Um, love this idea. Anytime you can get Skip Bayless involved, it's a great idea. Uh, the guy is the take master. Oh, look, hands down. Look, I get he's as annoying and awful of a sports personality as we have, but I cannot help myself from loving this guy's takes <laughs> at moments, man. He's this, the best. He's the best. He just says stuff that I'm like, I can't believe you said that. It's kind of genius. <laughs> like you know how many people you're going to make upset. You know how many people you're going to make upset. And he does it and he just does it beautifully. This is uh, you already made the dunk contest so much better by having the dunker choose their rim protector, go dunk on them. Now adding in Skip Bayless. I mean, Adam Silver. <laughs> you got to get this higher me. Season. Like this higher is higher me. Like just the alternates need to take over All Star Weekend, and we have a lot of ideas. This is this is just the beginning. At least put us in in the celebrity game. We're as recognizable as at least half of the people that were in the celebrity game. Absolutely. Um, okay, I have a similar ask. Okay, kinda related okay. to the All Star Weekend. I, I, we're just coming out of the All Star Weekend with all kinds of critiques and changes. I, I got love it. I got ideas. Yeah, I know. I can't. The skills challenge sucks. <laughs> do we do we just want to do we just want to admit it? You didn't have any fun with it. It's I, I liked the the teams. I like who they chose for it. Yeah. The, just the challenge itself sucks. Okay. But you know we just had the Winter Olympics. I watched a bit of the Winter Olympics. Always fun to see like a race, like two people, mano y mano, who can get there faster. <laughs> I want to see some of that put into the skills challenge. The skills challenge should just be who can throw a basketball the furthest. I would love to see that. <laughs> There's a line. We're in a big open field and you just chuck that thing. <laughs> I love that we're changing locations just for the skills challenge. A hundred percent. I want to see. Everything is in an arena except for the skills challenge is going to be in a football stadium. Somewhere. I want to see who can jump the highest. We're going to have the rim start at 10 feet. And you jump d- or dunk. So you're going to dunk, but no ball because we're going to go okay. higher and higher and higher. Each one. Like half Sammy a foot Hagar. up. Yeah. We're going to keep going up and then let's just follow it up with just a fun game of like horse or pig, maybe pig to shorten it up a little bit. Well, they used to have horse in all star weekend. So let's bring back horse. Let's ha- see who can throw the furthest, who can run the fastest, who can jump the highest. That's what I want to know. I love that. Can I add on to that? Yeah. So if we're just going the skills challenge and we're changing it up, doesn't even really have to do with the game of basketball. It's just incredible feats. So we are in the era of these guys taking their bodies seriously. We're no longer seeing a league full of players playing themselves into shape like we used to, right? Guys coming in, 
to training camp overweight or whatever and and playing themselves into shape it is a year-round thing and they're all about nutrition half of these guys have hired nutritionists have hired chefs food is a very very big part of what's going on in these guys lives a lot of guys going vegan exactly slimming down exactly yep. so let me propose that at the end of the skills challenge it's a cook contest oh and you have to cook a meal so we could do i'm thinking judge wise gordon ramsay but this just came to me yeah since skip is already judging the dunk contest you have rick bayless Oh. Judge the cooking contest. <laughs> okay. Celebrity chef Rick Bayless. I am all about this. Or you have Ramsey and Bayless, and they both get to play in the celebrity game as well. Definitely. Definitely. I, would, I would love to see Gordon Ramsey in a celebrity game just talking shit to the other team. Uh, unquestionably and he's definitely part of the judging for like all of it too like you threw that basketball like shit you know like i, I, I want to see all of it yeah i want to see all of it I, I love how much vitriol we're adding <laughs> to the all-star weekend it just, it's just entertainment yeah right it's just like it, it would just be fun and like you know someone would try and throw a basketball and like totally whiff it and like throw it behind them or like, <laughs> like it would just it, it would be so funny let's open the door for embarrassment i exactly. love it yeah exactly all right well basketball gods please 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 for the love of the <laughs> gods give us some of these at least all right new game time yeah three pack okay favorite segment two truths and a lie you're the one who's given me the facts here. What's the theme? What are we doing? I bet you could guess the theme. It's the All-Star game. <laughs> <laughs> now, I d you know, I had a tough time coming up with one and then I thought about the All-Star game. I started reading into the All-Star game a little bit and I was like, "Oh, there's some good ones in here." Okay. So, let's give a little history lesson here first about the All-Star game. I feel like that's important to know. Yeah. Good stuff to know. The All-Star game started in 1951. It's a lie. That's a lie. No, it's, this is true. Uh, the first game was held at the Boston Garden okay. Okay, in 1951. The idea for the game was credited to Haskell Cohen, who was the NBA's brand new publicist at the time. He had just been hired that year. Hmm. He pitched the idea to the owners based on baseball's very successful all-star game, right? Got it. Like, seems pretty obvious. Well, the owners were very pessimistic about it and the commissioner, <laughs> and they didn't want to do it. So the owner of the Celtics, Walter Brown, said... I will host it. I will cover the expenses. This is a great idea. Wow. Let's do it. Don't worry about it. So I said, well, I guess if you're going to pay for it, sure, go ahead. <laughs> it drew over 10,000 fans to the game, which was like triple their attendance at the time. At the time, they were drawing about 3,000 people. Yeah, so the, the NBA was brand new in 51. Yep. So, you know, obviously became a huge success. From that was born the All-Star Game, and now we have this beautiful All-Star Weekend and all this stuff. Thank you to Haskell Cohen for coming up with this idea, and thank you to the Celtics owner, Walter Brown at the time, for putting up the money and saying this is a great, great idea. Yeah, and thank you to every soda company on the face of the earth for keeping it going. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Mountain Dew, love you. Okay. <laughs> So now I'm going to give you three facts about the All-Star Game. One of them, of course, is a lie. Okay, I like this. All right, the first one. In the first All-Star Game, the Eastern Conference All-Stars defeated the Western Conference All-Stars 111-94. to This trend would continue. As it now stands, the East is 37-29 and against the West all-time. Okay. Secondly, talking about the All-Star Weekend, Nate Robinson is the shortest player to win the NBA slam dunk contest at only five foot nine. And he is also the only player to have won the contest three times. Okay. And third, Anthony Davis has the all-star game all time record for scoring in a quarter with 20, a half with 30 and a game with 52 all of which took place in the 2017 All-Star Game. Okay, this one's tough. The Eastern Conference record. And they won the first one. The, them, them winning the first one ever is the one that gives me a little bit of pause here. Mm -hmm. Because I know that at the time, the Lakers and the Kings were both in the Western Conference and were like the two best teams 
And then basically you had the Boston Celtics. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of it in the East. There wasn't any like real competition out there. Which makes it difficult to think that they won the first one. Nate Robinson, shortest player to win the NBA Slam Dunk Contest. So I know, I believe it was Spud Webb also won one. And I know that Nate jumped over him in one of his contests. Mm. Brought him out and jumped clean over him. He's got three, three titles as the dunk champion. Huh. Anthony Davis, I'm going to say is true. I vaguely remember him just going absolutely bonkers a few years ago. So I think that one's true. East, West, East, West. I'm going to say that one's true and Nate Robinson is a lie. I don't remember him winning three. Okay, so you are on to the lie, but you are on the wrong part of the lie. Okay. So Nate Robinson is not the shortest to have won. He did win three dunk contests. Wow. He is the only player to have won three dunk contests. Wow. But you were right. Spud Webb won the dunk contest in 1986. He's five foot seven. Okay. He is the shortest player to have won the slam dunk contest. The East is 37 and 29 against the West. And in fact, the East dominated very quickly. They won, I believe, the first four or five all-star games took a while for the West to win, even wow. though they had George Mikan on the team who was considered to be the best player. In the yeah. NBA. Yeah. All and right, yeah, well, Anthony Davis did have, uh, un- I couldn't believe that, that he I has the quarter half and game record yeah. for scoring. And I believe he actually hit the game winning shot uh, there in 2017. Yeah. I, I didn't remember the year, but I remember him just going absolutely nuts in a game and just doing everything. All right. Well, Spud Webb came through for me because I knew Webb there was gave, something yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. You you were on to that one. It we was might have Spud no, Webb. We don't have Spud on the table. I do have one of Spud's little action figures at home. I thought I brought him in the studio, but all right. Well, last game. Last game. The game. Duo jam time. So last week we did. What do we call it? League Pass South? <laughs> League Pass South, yeah. And it was the New Orleans Pelicans versus the Charlotte Hornets. Yeah. I picked the Pelicans. I had CJ McCollum. And I picked Jonas Valanciunas, which you said was a mistake not picking Brandon Ingram. Well, Jonas had a bigger week oh. than Brandon Ingram. Okay, so yeah. I picked wisely. Thank you very much. I did not pick the best, though. My team put up 178 and a half fantasy points last week. Your Hornets... The duo was LaMelo Ball and Miles Bridges. Put up 185.1. Ah, just edged me out. That gives you four and two on the season. I still have a losing record and it's killing me. But well played. Yep. Games resume in a couple days here. I want to go from the top to the bottom. Okay. Phoenix Suns versus the Detroit Pistons. And I've got a losing record. I don't give a shit. I'm taking the Pistons. I love it. I love it. So that gives you the Suns. Okay, so my duo here. I had to like really research this a little bit because the Pistons are such an odd team. There are several players that could go off in fantasy. But there's one that's just the easiest pick, and that's Cade Cunningham. (laughs) Obviously. Playing out of his mind. He's had some very near triple doubles. I'm riding the Cade wave. He fills up the box score. That's for sure. So I'm going with Cade Cunningham. My other one might be kind of a random pick for some people, but he's been so good as of late. And I have been a big believer of this dude since he got in the league. Sadiq Bey. Ooh, I love Sadiq Bey. I'm a huge Sadiq Bey yes. fan. And which is funny because he didn't really play. He didn't play in the beginning of the season. It was kind of rusty coming in. Yeah. And he has been on an absolute burner lately. Yep. So I'm going Cade Cunningham and Sadiq Bey. I love that. What's your duo out of Phoenix? Before I tell you my duo, I got I got to say something about Kate Cunningham. In their <laughs> last game, they played the Celtics. They yeah. beat the Celtics. There was a game ceiling basically block that Cade and Isaiah Stewart almost at the same time got the block. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I know where you're going with this. Isaiah Stewart was credited with this he got block. The block. Yeah, <laughs> I'm furious. <laughs> Cade absolutely had his hand on the ball first, without question. It was fucking ridiculous that Isaiah Stewart like got that block. there's a tie. Tie goes to the taller player. Yeah, tie goes to the big man. Yeah, they <laughs> definitely did that. Total bullshit. Cade, you deserve an extra block. 
I'm caping for you. Okay, well, we can throw an extra block in this week if you want for Cade Cunningham. <laughs> if, if you lose by one point, I will give you that block <laughs> and we'll be tied. How about that? <laughs> All right. All right, so I got the Phoenix Suns. Like you said, we're at the bottom here. They suck. Um, just kidding. Uh, so I went with Robert Sarver and the goats in his office. Amazing. Okay, well, I yeah, guess Google I'll just it. take my L right now. It's real. Um, no, uh, fuck that guy. Okay, so I chose Devin Booker. Wait, the goat? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> His name's Robert Sarver. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going with Devin Booker. He's a hell of a player. He's been on a burner recently. Love it. He's led the team in scoring in almost every single game this season. Yeah. And with Chris Paul, I'm weary about this hand situation. Mm. I don't know. We'll see. So I decided to go with pair him up with his rightful NBA Jam partner. Again, kind of bringing it back to like who you would actually have in your NBA Jam game. I paired him with DeAndre Ayton. Ooh, the homegrown sons. The homegrown sons. My Arizona boys are going to do it this time. Booker I, and Ayton. I definitely have an uphill battle <laughs> in, this, in this week's Duo <laughs> Jam, but I love a challenge. I think the Pistons are going to get me my third win of the season. It's going to be fun to see. Yeah. Yeah, your guys are going to be worn out from the uh, from the All-Star weekend. Probably true. Yeah, Cade got yeah. more rest. So I'm running with that. Okay, we will check back next week to see how that goes. That is going to be it for today's episode. Thank you all so much for joining us. Remember to hit subscribe to the YouTube channel, subscribe to the podcast, like, rate, review, share. That's the most important one. Share it yep. everywhere. Tell everyone you know. Tell who should they tell? They should tell their podiatrist. Podi yeah, let's get some podiatrists <laughs> in the subscriptions. I love that. We will be back in just a couple of days. We're going to be checking out the headliners because we will have games to talk about again. Yep. Underground Network, which is going to be very fun because I'm sure there's going to be some stuff that is getting overlooked. And then the weekend bets in Bet Brains, Casino of Clayton. We appreciate you all joining us. We are going to leave you with one of my favorite songs. A is for Army of Slaves by Alpinus, off mm -hmm. of their 2009 Minus Mensch LP on Alerta Antifascista Records. Thank you all so much. We'll see you in a couple days. Thanks. Thanks.